Here are some of the cameras available for checkout in our darkroom. Two levels here of uh, 35 millimeter cameras and then the bottom shelf are all 120 format cameras. Um, Holga's down in this corner, uh, twin lens cameras, two Hasselblads, and then the 35 millimeter cameras are arranged by brand. When you check out a camera, um, just pick out whatever one you want. There are actually camera cases in the film developing room if you need a case for your camera. And um, keep track of it in this black binder. And what you'll want to do is fill out a, a pink sheet with your name and your ID number and your phone. And then um, describe the camera. Most of them have property numbers, they all know. And then just say when you're taking it out and write down when you return. I'm going to start out talking about 35mm cameras, which there are two very distinct types. There are the newer ones that are all automatic, where you just drop the film in and um, focus, exposure, and film transport are all done automatically. And then we have the older all-manual cameras, um, which are much simpler and where you have to actually wind the film back after it's exposed. All right, we're talking about the all-manual 35mm camera. This would be a Nikon F from about 1970. Go over the parts here, and the lens comes off by pushing this button, turning it, and... There's two controls on it. One is the aperture, which um, changes the opening. Inside the lens, this one goes from wide open at 3.5 to close down to 22. The larger this is, the more light that goes through, and the smaller it is, the less. But the numbers are fractions. So your actual smallest opening is the highest number, 1 22nd to the focal length, 3.5 is 1 over 3.5 of the focal length. And this lens focuses from 1 foot to infinity. And you actually focus by looking through the viewfinder and then turning that ring until things look sharp. The compromise uh, with an adjustable camera is always between getting focus and getting a fast enough shutter speed. And there's a scale on here to see your depth of focus, also known as depth of field. So it's when you're at f22, you're at the red, and that means if you put the infinity here and you're actually focused at four feet, you should be able to get everything from two feet to infinity in focus. And so the front of the body of the camera is a mirror, and when you hit the shutter button, that mirror flips up for the instant the shutter is open, but allows you to see through the lens when you're right before you take the picture and the image is actually blacked out while the shutter is open. Looking through in the back of the camera is that the viewfinder connected to a pentaprism and on the Nikon F that comes off and there you can see it's kind of a normal kind of a prism. The image is actually focused um, via the mirror onto a ground glass screen, which you can see in here. So when you have the lens on and um, you have the pentaprism off, you can actually see the image projected on this screen. Well, the back actually comes completely off. And you can see the shutter. The shut, shut curtain's a little wrinkled there, getting bumped against things. Um, if we put this on the B setting for bulb. This is your shutter speed control. It'll hold the shutter open as long as you um, hold the shutter button down and you can see right through the camera until you release it and the shutter closes. At your slower speeds, your shutter completely opens like that, but at faster speeds, um, the, it actually is a slot that scans through there. And on all these cameras, uh, the shutter scale is color-coded so you know the fastest speed that you can use with flash. 
and this camera is a 60th of a second and newer ones it's a little faster usually. These cameras are all pretty similar to load. Take your film out of the box and a little plastic container. The uh, there's kind of a nub at the bottom here that goes down. Stick that at the top. Pull the leader around. Feed the leader into the take-up spool. Get it against this gear. Start it moving along. Hit the shutter every time you move the lever once. Um, you want to get about one rotation on here um, before you close the camera just to make sure everything's okay. And also it's a good idea to take this little crank and crank it back to make sure that you have film tension here. And that way you can actually watch this crank and see that the film is going through the camera. So now we're ready to put the back on. Close the back, which is the case on many, and then lock it. And then um, we need to. So right now, here's our counter window, and it's at zero. There you can see it. And um, we need to advance that several times because the film that's now, you know, from the film can over has all been exposed to light. So we hit the shutter. Advance it, still on zero, hit the shutter again. Here we're advanced one mark past the zero, so that should be exposure number one, and we should be ready to make a picture. Some of these cameras will have working light meters, which will help you to um, do the shutter and speed and f-stop settings so you get a correct exposure. But even if they do have a light meter, the app on your iPhone is probably more accurate. You must be at the slower speeds in a dark situation with the larger opening on the lens, which is the smaller number, because both of these are fractions. So two on here is one half second. In a dark situation, you always be at the slower shutter speeds. Most people can only hold the camera steady at about a fifteenth of a second, or a thirtieth, or maybe if you're particularly shaky, a sixtieth. So keep in mind that your camera has to be on a tripod or brace to use the slower speeds. Door setting, exactly the opposite. You're going to be at the faster shutter speeds. Um, the rule is usually to put the, num the shutter speed number that's closest to your ASA or your films with 400 uh, speed film, that would be a five hundredth of a second. And then your exposure in bright sun is going to be F6, the correct exposure will be F16. And that will give you a shutter speed that will stop motion and a lot of depth of focus. Um, here you could be from infinity to about three feet and everything will be in focus. Uh, when you're to about number 25 or number 26, on your 24 exposure roll, you'll notice that when you try to advance, the advanced um, lever isn't going to move anymore, and that means your roll of film is, full, is fully exposed and you need to wind it back into the canister. The tension on the advance, um, you, on a Nikon you actually do something that's, you move this from the A to the R, um, on most 35mm manual cameras, there's a button at the bottom, kind of directly um, below the advance that you push in, that loosens up the advance tension. So, and usually you have to hold those buttons in, like on a Pentex camera. Um, so once that's released, you take this crank, and it's a lot of cranking to get a, a full 24 exposure roll back into the canister, but you'll be able to hear it come off on this side, and um, if, if you have any doubt, just keep winding it, and when you're satisfied nothing's happening, um, open up the back and take out the roll of thumb. So we're back to where we started. We have a twin lens reflex camera. This is a roll of flex um, in the uh, Dark room. we have a couple of Yashikas that are pretty much identical to this, and a couple of Mamiyas. To view 
through these cameras you lift up the focusing hood and you look down onto a ground glass. It's a little more discreet than holding a camera in front of your face. Large knob on the side is your focus. Stops are controlled by the wheel on the left and then you view what stop you're at through the window at the top. Your shutter speeds are on the right and you also view through that same window. These cameras use the same 120 film as the Holga. If you go to the bottom, there's an arrow that shows you that you push this thing over and then you pull this clamp off. Your spools are ready in the take up side. Get out our 120 film. And off uh, again. Roll flex goes through a roller here, as does the Mamiya. The Ishikas don't have this. Um, so we just turn this crank until we get the slot that we need to put this in. on here. Make sure this is all lined up. And there's usually a red mark that you line this up with right about here. And then you're ready to close the back, clamp it, and then turn the crank. And it'll come up on number one and you're ready to shoot. We have several of these automatic everything film cameras in the darkroom. These look quite a bit like digital DSLR cameras, but they're actually the last generation of film cameras. It makes most sense to use it in either the program mode or the A mode for automatic. Which I'm not finding. There we go. The only problem people tend to have with these cameras is getting them loaded. Right, make sure it's turned on. Open up the back. And the film goes in this end, nubby side down, slips in there. And the idea is that you put the leader of the film right where this red mark is. And then just close the back and hit the shutter button. And it should load and then you should be on exposure number one. When you get to the end of the roll, um, it's, these cameras are supposed to wind the film back into the cassette, but often don't. Um, on this one, you'll see a little like film roll here with a couple arrows. So you actually have to hold this button down and this button, where you also see the film roll thing, and then it manually winds the film back into the camera. So even as a double, so you'll notice it because you'll be at like exposure 25 or 26 and you know this thing will just be grinding away for a minute winding the film back into the cassette but if it doesn't do that then you have to hit these two buttons and make sure it does. Everything on these cameras is automatic. All you do is turn it on Push the button halfway down for it to autofocus. Push it all the way down to take a picture, and it automatically advances the film to the next exposure.